installment of American Problems. I'm your host, Veronica Jameson. Tonight, we have a special guest here to talk with us about the controversial topic of legalizing controlled substances. Author of the New York Times best-selling book, Money and Other Stuff You Should Probably Care About, top economist and professor at BSU, please welcome Dr. Vinny Ferragamo. Dr. Ferragamo, thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me, Veronica. Now, Doctor, with the possibility of drugs like marijuana becoming completely legal, medicinal marijuana being already available, and drugs like alcohol and the nicotine in cigarettes being widely accepted by most of the American population, can you give us a breakdown of the pros and cons of legalizing other drugs, such as heroin or cocaine? Certainly, Veronica. Let's start with the cons. These drugs have been banned, taxed, and regulated for a reason. In the case of cigarettes, the tax applies to keep people from smoking, because you can't smoke cigarettes you don't buy. The logic behind keeping other drugs on the naughty list is because they have adverse effects mentally and physically on the human body. Though drugs like cocaine or LSD can give you a psychedelic high, They ultimately blow holes in your brain, cause weight loss, severe depression, deviated septums, tooth decay, rape, robbery, murder, incarceration, pregnancy, and death. Very interesting. I'll be honest, I don't really see how there could be any pros to legalizing any of this. Help us out here, doctor. Well, Veronica, a certain percentage of the crime surrounding the drug world is simply because they're illegal. Remember prohibition? Didn't work. Still doesn't. At least if you're talking about teenage alcohol abuse. Teen drinking is very bad. The crime rate across the country rose dramatically during prohibition. Keyword during. It was higher because even though the alcohol was illegal, people still wanted or needed it. So they had to lie, cheat, steal, rape, rob, and murder to get it. So in that sense, if the drugs desired were readily available and not as dangerous to acquire or possess and legal to top it all off, it's safe to say that the crime rate could decrease greatly, as it did with prohibition when alcohol was finally made legal again. Also, if the drugs became recognized by the government as being valid in the marketplace, we could place a sin tax on them, like with cigarettes and alcohol, which may, over time, help decrease the demand for them. Very intriguing, Dr. Ferragamo. So, how about economically? How would these drugs affect, say, government spending or GDP if they were to become completely legalized? Honestly, it's a half and half with this one, Veronica. I mean, as far as government spending is concerned, a lot of the money we spend is on preventative measures, you know, for domestic welfare, like with situations like this. The U.S. government spends approximately $41.3 billion annually on enforcing these drug laws and prosecuting people who break them. And you don't need me to tell you, $41.3 billion is no small chunk of change. Now, as far as the GDP is concerned, our gross domestic product, if these drugs became a legal part of the marketplace, their sale could count toward and possibly raise our GDP, as could the cost of rehabilitation centers and hospitalizations due to overdoses from taking these drugs, uh, the long-term health effects, you know, liver necrosis and tooth decay and psychosis and uh, towards the deaths of these drug addicts and towards the psychiatric care for their friends and family. So, you know, it can be pretty costy being a drug addict. So, in short, we would no longer have to spend all the money trying to keep people from doing the stuff that they're going to be doing in back alleyways and dark basements anyhow, and our GDP could go up. But, you know, that's not really saying much for the quality of life of these drug addicts or the future drug addicts or the American people as a whole. 
Very nicely put, Doctor. It's really a give and take here, isn't it? Ha, <laughs> yeah, it is. So, Doctor, since we're almost out of time for our show tonight, would you say that there's any middle ground with this whole legalization business? Is there anything for us Americans without a drug habit to worry about? No, Veronica, I don't think there's much to worry about here. Though many bills have gone back and forth about the legality of marijuana for recreational use in California, and medicinal marijuana is available in some places for people who have chronic or painful ailments, and uh, we've all grown accustomed to, you know, cigarettes and alcohol, unless people stop ODing and stabbing their girlfriends over a brick of heroin, I don't think any hardcore drugs are going to become legal anytime soon. Syntax or no syntax, huh? Well, I should hope so. Ha 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 Oh, well, thank you so much for being with us this evening and stimulating our conversation, Doctor. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Vinny Ferragamo. Ah, oh, the pleasure's all mine, Veronica. Thanks for having me. Anytime, Doctor. Thank you again for joining us tonight for another provocative episode of American Problems. We hope to see you next week when we talk about the effects of extreme obesity on our GDP. Have a great evening, and stay sober, America.